Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT this morning, it's a big week for Kentucky politics now that we are just days away from the Republican Presidential Caucus. One candidate is making a stop in Lexington this morning. Interstate 75 is still shut down this morning, and it looks like it will be for weeks. We'll take a look at how that is impacting traffic. And the 88th Annual Academy Awards are in the books. We'll find out who walked away big winners on a night where controversies also took center stage. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky mornings start right here on WKYT. Good morning to you. I'm Bill Bryant. It is your Monday. It is Leap Day for 2016, February 29th. A day that only date that only comes around once every four years. Uh, Rebecca's off this morning. Meteorologist Micah Harris is on duty in our first alert weather center after a terrific weekend. Yeah, it was an awesome weekend, and we really had those, those gusts yesterday, pumping in the warmer air. And the warmer air was the byproduct of those gusts. So if you didn't like the gusts, well, just think. Well, if you didn't have them, it wouldn't have been that warm. Here's the look across east and southeastern Kentucky as that front is pushing on through. And once that front pushes on through. Gets the rain on out of here for today in the next hour, hour and a half, and then we are good to go. 40s and 50s this morning, and we'll finish off for everybody by the afternoon, mid 50s. Very nice day in store. But then we look toward tomorrow. Tomorrow we're looking at strong, potentially severe storms. I'm going to break down the timing and what you can expect out of those coming up. All right, we'll see you shortly. Thank you. This is a big week for politics and for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Three Republican presidential candidates will be making stops here in the Bluegrass State ahead of Saturday's caucus. Dr. Ben Carson is one of those candidates. He'll be holding a town hall meeting this morning here in Lexington. WKYT's Mark Barber joins us live to preview the event. Good morning, Bill. And Dr. Ben Carson is bringing his campaign here to Lexington with just six days until Kentucky's first ever Republican presidential caucus. Now, now the retired neurosurgeon will be here at the High Intensity Training Center on Rukia Way from 10 to 11 this morning for a town hall meeting. Now, according to the event's website, that meeting is free. However, it is already sold out. The retired neurosurgeon who has built a platform on his Christian faith and ultra conservative values was once one of the top contenders in the presidential race. However, he's now down in the polls. According to the latest numbers from CBS News, he has a support of 6% of primary voters compared to Donald Trump's 35%. How Carson does in Kentucky on Saturday and how he does on Super Tuesday could make or break his campaign. He says he will closely watch the results of Super Tuesday to determine if he will stay in the race. Voters who are going to start filling up the hit center here on Rukia Way later this morning will hear Carson's first appeal to Kentucky voters on why he should become the Republican nominee in July. Of course, as Kentucky starts to really become uh, the focal point and starts to take center stage in this presidential race, we will be here as well bringing you live updates on WKYT through the morning. And those updates will be available for you as well on our website on WKYT.com. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber. WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you. And Republican Kentucky voters will caucus this Saturday, March 5th, to vote for who they think should get the Republican presidential nomination. The voting hours are from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. And if you don't know your assigned caucus location, you can go to the website on your screen and find out the exact location, rpk.org caucus. All right, if you are heading south this morning and you planned on taking Interstate 75, get ready for some detours or maybe make some other plans. A rock slide on Friday afternoon has caused road crews to shut down the interstate at the Kentucky-Tennessee state line. More details, WKYT's Mike Byer is at our live desk with this traffic alert. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Rocks and heavy debris continue to fall on Interstate 75 in Campbell County, Tennessee, north of Knoxville. This is causing a major headache for drivers. It all began Friday afternoon when a rock slide closed all lanes of Interstate 75. This happened near exit 141 between Jellicoe and La Follette. Now crews on site have already started moving debris, but rocks are still falling, causing major problems. Geotechnical engineers are supposed to be on site today. The Tennessee Department of Transportation hopes to get project bids in order to stabilize the slide. According to TDOT, more than 30,000 drivers use the highway daily, so if you are heading south, be prepared for delays. We spoke with our sister station in Knoxville, WVLT, this morning. They tell us that the detour will add at least an hour to your trip. Now, if you are traveling south today near the affected area, cars are being encouraged to take I-75 south to Jellicoe. 
From there, you'll have to get off at exit 160 and then get onto US 25 West. Eventually, you'll be able to get back on 75 South. Now, this mess isn't expected to clear up anytime soon. TDOT says this is going to be a long term closure, meaning weeks and not days. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, folks just need to make uh, other plans or figure out a way if you're going that way. A man is recovering this morning after walking into a Lexington fire station with stab wounds. Lexington police say the man walked into the fire station on East 3rd Street yesterday afternoon. He told them someone on Upper Street had stabbed him in the chest. Crews took him to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police are calling it an assault case. Lexington police are still searching for the two men who they say robbed a gas station over the weekend. Police say the men walked into the Circle K on Richmond Road around 4 o'clock Sunday morning. One of them had a gun and demanded cash. Police say they did get away with some money. Officers called in a canine to try to help with the search, but they didn't find anything. Officers tell us that they are seeing a spike in car thefts around Lexington. They say thieves have stolen approximately 50 cars this month. Of those 50, 14 were left running while unattended. Another 16 had a spare key inside. A good way to prevent car theft, officers say, is to never leave your car unlocked or unattended. Well, a western Kentucky woman is in jail this morning after being on the run for a week and a half. State police say... Lostia Shreves broke out of the Western Kentucky Correctional Complex on February 17th. Since then, people have spotted her several times in Hardin County. And yesterday, state police say they found her at an empty house in the Flint Hill area. She's being held in the Hardin County Detention Center now on burglary charges. It has been 58 years since the worst school bus crash in U.S. history. Back on February 28, 1958, a bus carrying 48 students went into the Big Sandy River in Floyd County. 26 children were killed, and so was the bus driver. But 22 also survived, and the Floyd County Rescue Squad was formed two months after that horrible bus crash. It was the first one in Kentucky. There are several monuments for the 27 victims, including one outside of the Floyd County Rescue Squad headquarters. Changes are coming for those who use water from Lake Cumberland. They'll have to start paying for the water. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers say that repairs to the Wolf Creek Dam cost $600 million. Supplying water was not an authorized purpose of the Wolf Creek Dam when Congress approved it back in the 1930s. Several cities and businesses in southern Kentucky use water from it, and they'll have to start paying for it and contribute to any future dam repairs. In Lawrence County, firefighters do not know what caused a historic home to catch on fire. First responders spent hours putting out the fire on Main Street in Louisa. The building was the Stuart Mayo House. It was built in the mid-1800s. No one was inside the home when it started. Some Oscar winners may be wrapping up their post-show parties only now this morning. The 88th Academy Awards were last night. The big awards were handed out on a night where the lack of diversity among the nominees was taking center stage. Chris Martinez wraps up the big night. The film that shined a spotlight on victims of the Catholic priest sex abuse scandal won for Best Picture at the 88th Annual Academy Awards. Pope Francis, it's time to protect the children and restore the faith. Action film Mad Max Fury Road was the most honored film of the night, walking away with six production awards. You can pop the cocks at home, we're running home gold. The Revenant won for Best Directing, and its star, Leonardo DiCaprio, won Best Actor for his role as the vengeful frontiersman. It was his fifth nomination, but his first win. Let us not take this planet for granted. I do not take tonight for granted. Thank you so very much. Oh, wow. Brie Larson won Best Actress for her role as an abducted mother in Room. Chris Rock hosted the night, his opening monologue all about the all-white nominees. Otherwise known as the uh, White People's Choice Awards. The comedian beat the diversity drum every chance he got, and the president of the Academy echoed his sentiment. Our audiences are global and rich in diversity, and every facet of our industry should be as well. Even here on the red carpet, where Oscar fashion is usually the biggest topic of discussion, diversity was front and center. I'm here because to disappear and truly make it Oscar so white is stupid to me. The night also included visits from R2-D2, BB-8, and Vice President Joe Biden, who joined Lady Gaga for a special presentation aimed at combating sexual violence. 
Chris Martinez, CBS News, Hollywood. And the Academy has recently taken several steps to diversify its membership, which is mostly made up of white men. Well, 11 Kentucky sites are now on the National Register of Historic Places. Two of those are in Lexington. The National Park Service added the Charles Young Park and Community Center and the Old People's Bank to the nation's official list. Owners of National Register properties qualify for tax credits for rehabilitation. A brand new hotel in downtown Lexington opens up today. There will be a ribbon cutting ceremony and open house at the 21C Museum Hotel on Main Street. The 15-floor former First National Bank building has 88 hotel rooms. Our partners at the Herald Leader report those rates will range from $200 a night to about $700 a night for a 15th floor suite. The restaurant inside the hotel, the lockbox, opened up earlier this month. Well, it's good to have you along on WKYT on this Monday morning, and we are just getting started on this brand new work week. Goodbye, robots. Hello, humans. Find out why one German automaker is getting rid of robots to assemble its cars. That story and more still ahead on WKYT this morning. We have the front pushing through as we speak. We have the rain moving on out, and here comes some cooler temperatures, but it's not cool. I'll show you that forecast and explain that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It really does depend on where you live. Early this morning, as we take you zone by zone, you live down toward the southeast, you have showers, gusty winds, pretty mild temperatures. If you live back toward the north or the west, you're talking about the winds really calming down, no rain because the rain's already passed on through in much cooler conditions. Let's talk about the rain first, what's going on on Defender Radar Network. You look down toward the southeast, Paintsville, I would give it another 30 minutes and you'll be done with the rain. That goes for Sayersville. It's now starting to move on out of Sayersville and you'll be done with it here in just the next few minutes. Back toward McKee, work your way across 421 into McKee and also sitting there in Beattiesville, Boonville. Uh, all that is long gone. The rain's long gone. How Rogers Parkway, another 30, 45 minutes and you'll be over with with the rain for the rest of the day, not just for the next couple of hours, but for the rest of the day. I would say southeast, if you go into the mountainous regions, into, say, Harlan, Letcher Pike, still around another hour, hour and a half. But you look at the temperatures, it depends on where you live. Like I was talking about, it's 42 down in Lexington, 43 in Frankfurt. It's not a bad feel, but it's much cooler than what you're seeing down toward the southeast, Middlesbrough. Then work your way off into Whitley County. Uh, you go into Williamsburg and Saxton, Jellicoe Mountain area. You're talking about temperatures near 60 degrees early this morning. But that will change once that front passes on through here in the next hour or two. By the afternoon, we're at 53 degrees. Pretty good day in store. It's not as good as yesterday, but you know what? It's still pretty nice. That's well above average and also holding on to mostly sunny skies. The afternoon is really nice. You'll really enjoy it once those skies uh, start to clear on out. Once we head off into the evening and overnight, not really dropping that much. We'll be in the 40s. And then it ramps up to the 60s tomorrow with some gusty winds. That's ahead of our next system. In our next system, you can see a slight risk of severe weather, and that goes for every single county in our viewing area. If you are watching this morning, you are under a risk of severe weather for tomorrow. This is no outbreak type of situation. This is the lower end of severe weather, but still strong storms will make their way through. I'm very confident in that, but embedded in those strong storms, that line that's going to be moving through, you could have a few isolated severe cells as it passes on through. Now, damaging winds will be your main player for tomorrow, and then it turns Tuesday into Wednesday. Then you're talking about the snow chance. Is it going to be a big deal? No, not with this one. Some light snow is a possibility. And then we go back up to the 40s and 50s as we head towards your weekend. All eyes, obviously, on tomorrow with those strong to potentially severe storms. Okay, we'll uh, watch that. We'll savor the weekend. Yeah, Look forward right. to the next yeah, that one. That weekend right? was nice. Wasn't, <laughs> wasn't it good? Yeah. All right, the time this morning is coming up on 517. When we return, we'll have a look at your money. Why the IRS cyber hack is worse than previously thought, and why Mercedes Benz is bucking the trend when it comes to making cars. I'm Hannah Daniels in New York. I'll have those stories and much more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Good morning and welcome back in WKYT this morning on the air on your Monday. Hope you're going to make it a good one. 520 now. Mercedes Benz is handing out pink slips to its robotic employees. And good news for vegans looking for ice cream. Hannah Daniels has the latest on your money. 
The Commerce Department says gross domestic product grew by 1% in the fourth quarter, and that's better than expected. On Friday, the Dow closed down 57 points. The Nasdaq was up 8. A cyber hack into the IRS is worse than initially thought. The federal agency says scammers gained access to more than 700,000 accounts, more than double than previously estimated. The information stolen includes data that could be used to file a false tax return and collect a refund. The IRS is mailing notifications to affected taxpayers. Mercedes-Benz is swapping out robots for humans on its assembly lines. In an interview with Bloomberg, the German automaker says the robots can't handle the complexity of customized options offered to its customers. Mercedes-Benz processes 1,500 tons of steel a day and churns out more than 400,000 vehicles a year. Ben & Jerry's is going vegan with new flavors that include chocolate fudge brownie, peanut butter and cookies, chunky monkey, and coffee caramel fudge. The dessert flavors will be made with almond milk instead of cream. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. In New York, I'm Hannah Daniels. All right, coming up on 522, bright and early on a very pleasant Monday morning. Hope you'll stay with us for a lot more news and sports is on the way next. Jamal Murray turns in an impressive performance despite the Wildcats dropping a game at Bandy, and the UK women's team finishes the regular season strong. Those highlights are straight ahead in sports. We are trying to push this rain on out. This is a front that's moving on through. If you felt the winds yesterday, if you were outside, uh, that was, those were the winds that were coming in out ahead of the system, and the system were just pulling it on in. And now we're starting to see that system move through overnight and into early this morning. Depends on where you are. The rain down toward the southeast is keeping us a little bit milder than everybody else. Temperatures where the front has already pushed on through, dropping pretty quickly there in the 40s. I'm going to talk about your afternoon. Really focus on the strong to severe threat coming up in just a few minutes. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. After winning five straight, the Kentucky women's basketball team entered the final day of the regular season in a three-way tie for fourth place in the SEC. The Cats looking to finish strong on the road to Texas A&M on Sunday. The Lady Aggies had already locked up the number two seed in the SEC tournament coming up this week. Kentucky had to play catch up early. Michaela Epps hits the three from the wing. Kentucky was down by just a point. Wildcats take the lead in the second quarter. Freshman Macy Morris driving, going high off the glass. 21 19 UK. Another freshman, Taylor Murray, maybe the fastest player in all of women's college basketball, turns on the Jets and lays it in. Kentucky had a 30 to 28 lead at the half. Second half. Epps goes to work first, the 15 foot jumper, then Epps, nice little head fake, steps into the shot. She finished with 14 points in the fourth quarter. Epps driving, going to miss this time, but Evelyn Akator is there for the rebound and the putback. A career high 18 rebounds for Akator to go with 15 points. Alexis Jennings also had a double double as Kentucky pulls away with an impressive 71 to 58 road win. The Wildcats will be the fifth seed in the upcoming SEC tournament. Well, John Calipari said Saturday's game at Vandy was like an NCAA tournament game, and it was like some of his guys didn't ring the bell. Now he becomes a little more worried if they can ring the bell or not. Well, the only bell ringer for the Wildcats at Vandy was Jamal Murray, and likely lost in the eight point defeat was his impressive performance. Murray's 33 point performance was his third 30 point game of the season. His six three pointers, well, that gives him 91 on the year, breaking the UK freshman record previously held by Brandon Knight. Calipari thought Jamal gave UK all he could on Saturday. Jamal carried us and tried the whole game, and that was it. And then we had a chance to win. That's why I'm not like crazy right now. He scored 33 points. He still scored in the second half. Got grabbed a bunch. There weren't calls. He did fine. Well, what do you think? He should get 50? Two very important games for the Wildcats this week, beginning with the game Tuesday night at Florida. That one's at 7 o'clock. You can see it on ESPN. For now, that'll do it for your morning sports. Have a great day.